Just a quick warning, if you're upset by loads and loads of fishing tackle, if you're triggered by copious amounts of well organised, well looked after, labelled fly fishing gear, turn away now, leave this video, it's not for you. If on the other hand you really want to see what's inside a competition angler's boat bag, carry on watching. Shut up and sit down. Folks, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. Um, so we're back to doing a tackle talk again today, and uh, we're going to do, as promised, a look through the boat bag, boat bag slash competition bag, okay? Because pretty much it's the same uh, lot I take out with me when I go out on, a, on uh, to compete. I don't change things around too much. Um, so we'll have a little walk through the gear, and um, uh, before we get started, a couple of things to worth pointing out as to why we've got such an amount of gear here, okay? Um, one and foremost is when you're out on a boat, you're normally out for the day. So uh, uh, typically you're gonna get changing conditions throughout the day. Um, so you, you, pretty, you, you wanna take a fair bit of gear with you. You wanna be have enough to cover all sorts of eventualities um, and the different lakes you might be visiting throughout the year. Um, secondly, when I talk about boat fishing, I talk about uh, lock style fishing. I talk about fishing from a drifting boat, not an anchored boat, that's a different kettle of fish altogether. You need a lot less tackle for fishing off a, an anchored boat. Why do we need more tackle? Predominantly more lines for fishing off a drifting boat because depth control is um, uh, made more difficult. So to get precise depth control because you've got a moving boat all the time, we we'll use lines to get the flies down to where we get down to. In the competition, we're not allowed to use weighted flies either, so the lines become even more important. We can't rely on any weight in the fly. We use our lines, and I'll take you all through the lines and everything else as we go through this. Um, another thing to notice about the boat fishing gear as well, it's all waterproof, okay? Everything's made out of, I like, I've been using for this last year, this EVA material bags. Um, I used to use a tackle box, a lot of folks use tackle boxes, the big plastic tackle boxes as well. Um, basic principle behind them is that they're waterproof because you're going to be even on a, on a nice bright day out in the water you're going to be coming through some pretty bumpy lumpy water taking water in the boat all the time everything sits in water it's soaking wet so you'll see as we're going through everything it's all made to be uh, waterproof as best we can um, I think what I'll do is uh, after that little intro I'll just take you through all the little bits and pieces as we go through them and try and uh, cover all the questions. I know you look uh, quite excited to see what I carry in my comp box. And this is a fairly um, uh, average kind of setup for most comp anglers, the, the guys that I compete with and against. Um, we carry pretty much all the same sort of stuff. Some carry more than others, others less than others. I try to keep mine as compact as I can. So, uh, so here's your bag, here's the comp bag. Now, as I said, this last year I've been using um, one of these new EVA bags. Um, I used to use a plastic, big plastic uh, tackle box and uh, some people use the pelly boxes, etc, etc. Basic purpose of the boxes, of course, is to keep everything dry. And I can't uh, keep emphasising that enough. You, there's going to be so much water in a boat. Um, you must keep everything dry, otherwise your gear will soon rot away um, in no time at all. So the first thing you'll notice here is the two front pockets here. I've got my reels in. I've got uh, a reel and I've got a spare reel of exactly the same in the other pocket there as well. Always carry spares when you're out in a boat. Um, accidents happen. Um, things uh, fall off the edge of the boat, things break down, um, it just happens, okay. And then there'd be nothing worse than uh, one being out in a competition and something going wrong because there's no way your boat partner is going to let you go back to the lodge and buy a new reel or go back to your car, etc. And two, if you're, let's say you're at the top of the North Arm of, uh, of Rutland and uh, you, you drop your reel over the edge or uh, your rod snaps or something like that and you're up there and you haven't got a spare with you, that's a long old trek back to the lodge to go and get yourself sorted out. So always take spares with you. Um, and that goes for the, uh, the, the lines, your fluoros, 
um, the reels, etc, etc, etc. Okay. Um, once it's in the boat, and, and that's the difference with this stuff is when you're you're not carrying this very far. You're carrying this from the car car park to your boat and the boat and back again. Once it's in the boat, it's there for the day. You don't have to carry it. So we're not worried about having too much gear um, because once it's in there, it's in there. So let's have a look and see what we've got inside the bag. Um, first thing you're going to notice inside this bag, and as we just discussed and just talked about briefly there, is lines. Okay, this is the difference between bank fishing and boat fishing, uh, lock style boat fishing, shall I say, where we're drifting all the time. So the control of the depth um, is done by your line. Okay, we use the lines to take the flies down to where we want, uh, where we think the fish are. Uh, we can't use weighted flies in uh, competition angling; uh, it's, it's against the rules. So we carry these lines with different sink rates and different profiles. Okay, and by profiles I mean mainly these tip lines. They have different sinking profiles to them to give you a different uh, aspect, a different way of the flies coming back up through the uh, the water. Um, all nice and organized okay these have got no old leader on them um, they're all ready just to pick up out and ready to go just pick up out of the box um, that one yeah floater yeah lovely it's got the braided loop on the end of it, it hasn't got any old rubbishy line on it and they're all labeled up as to exactly what they are um, uh, brands I'm not worried about it's more what they do so floaters midge tips uh, intermediates uh, your glass lines and then your, your di3s five sevens etc etc now i carry um a seven weight setup and an eight weight setup when i go out that's just me that's my personal choice i like fishing the seven weight in uh, um calmer conditions when I'm nymphing, when I'm dry fly fishing. Uh, um, I prefer, personally I prefer to fish with the seven weights and when I'm pulling, when I'm in waves, when I'm out in big winds, then I'll step up to eight weight gear. Uh, and that's just work for me, so that's uh, that's what I do. So I don't ca carry every line in a double because there's no need to, but some of them I'll carry a seven and an eight and uh, um, that suits me. But yeah, all nicely well labelled up, um, well organised, and I could just lay my hand on them, boom, like that. And again, in a nice waterproof case, so that we're not gonna take on any water uh, when that's all sealed up there, and it's gonna stop that from getting in there and rotting. The water does so much damage to this stuff. So that's your lines. Next bit in here is the box bits and pieces. Um, so this is your sort of your essentials, the bits and pieces you're going to need for your day's fishing. Um, so we've got glasses. Okay, always got uh, uh, Polaroids in there. I've um, got some spare braided loops. I've got a few indicators in there. Um, and I've got a couple of these uh, foam spool tidies, okay, with pre tied uh, leaders on them. I don't use a lot of pre tied leaders. I tend to prefer to do them when I'm out in the boat myself because I find things change so much day to day that I want my spacings to change and be different. And it doesn't take me long to tie up leaders. But something like this, it's a tapered leader that I use for the um, these popper fry. I like to have one or two of these ready in the boat for myself and my clients um, and if we have an opportunity to chuck a weed bed or we see a few fish moving we'd very very quickly just pull off the leader we're using tie on this new leader here that's a tapered leader and uh, unravel it and whoosh ready to go opportunistic fishing just makes sense to have them inside the other little bag here is um, uh, your fluorocarbon so a range of fluorocarbons from um, six pound to ten pound oh, I've got a spool of 12 there that I lose for tapering but basically six to ten is all I use um, in a couple of different brands there my preferred two brands the um, which were ghost and of course the flo g3 brilliant uh, both brilliant fluorocarbons um, in the side here I've got a little pair of pliers just in case anything goes wrong, um, a pair of scissors, a bit of gink, there's a bit of mud in there as well, um, oh, a set of lie detectors, um, you should always carry those in the boat just to make sure that those, um, all those eight pounders we all keep catching aren't actually four pounders and there's my dog just come walking in, you help yourself there Molly, yeah set of them, they're, they're nice and cheap, they just come off Amazon, easy to get hold of, so they're in the box here as well. So that's it, inside there. Um, that's all I'm going to need for a day's fishing, there's no way I'm going to need anything else. I'm not going to take the kitchen sink with me, that's just not my style. Um, but the next bit is uh, the bit that you might say is a bit excessive, and these are the flies, okay? And we do carry a lot of flies as boat anglers, as competition anglers. All right, um, we carry a lot of variety 
and we carry a, a lot of uh, replicas of successful patterns all right um, and this is for a few reasons the first thing you'll notice I like to use these double-sided boxes they're good for storage they're compact they get bashed around in the boat they're not going to break um, and they're easy to find the fly you want because they're clear and easy and nice and see-through and they're all labeled up as well so what I'm looking at sideways in the box they're nymphs they're dries etc etc cormorants hairs ears etc etc um, the other thing you'll notice about uh, uh, these boxes um, there's a real variety in here and that's because I'm not just fishing one lake day in day out I'm fishing a variety of waters around the country sometimes two or three different waters in the space of a week and I need to have uh, different localized patterns for those lakes and those waters also when you're out on a competition and uh, let's say your boat partner starts to give you a bit of battering on a fly or something and it's a particular pattern um, you're likely to get a look at it but the chances of him turning around saying oh there you go Tim have a couple of these on me it has happened there are some nice people out there but it's not very very likely they're going to look at you and shake their head and say well you should have been prepared for this one so I like to have all the likely candidates in there as I say it's overkill for your day-to-day -day fishing but if you're competition fishing this is actually probably quite a modest selection compared to uh, a lot of folks out there and what a lot of people carry but again it's all nice I can see them they're all nice clear boxes which I think is essential I can lay my hands on anything nice and nice and quickly um, and they're all nice tough boxes so when they get thrown around the boat they're not going to get broken should it take any water on there um, they're not going to get water in the flies either which can be devastating I don't think there's anything else oh yeah yeah here we are and of course as always uh, you always carry a priest um, we're going more to more towards catch and release all the time but uh, when you're on your pleasure days a uh, priest with a decent marrow spoon um, and also even on your catch and release days there's a chance you may have to dispatch the odd fish if it won't go back so always a priest in the bag there um, yeah I think that's pretty much uh, got that covered as far as flies go um, the other thing I carry or the other actually one more thing to mention about the flies while I'm here is um, on the subject of catch and release keep your barbless flies separate okay keep them in a separate box altogether uh, because there's nothing more embarrassing than fishing all day long with a barbless or fishing all day long with a barbed hook when you should or shouldn't be so genuine mistakes do happen um, and if you keep your flies separated then that's just reducing the likelihood and also for the competition side of the things try to keep all your competition boxes competition legal the sizes of the flies competition legal and again that's going to stop any upsets uh, any should they or shouldn't be because all of the only flies you take out on the lake that day are the ones you're allowed to fish from the comp it just makes sense okay the other thing that i carry with me uh, in the boat is a dry bag okay so this is a dry bag it's just a nice plastic bag that uh, folds up and it means I can store my extra bits in there that I'm going to need uh, for my days fishing and there's only a couple of bits in here I don't need that much more the first thing you'll notice is your boat clamps okay these are your G clamps that are drilled out this is for using for your drogues on the boat when you're drifting lock style fishing if I need to take a drogue that will go in that bag as well but more and more commonly we haven't used the fisheries drogues and nets now so I don't need to do that um, this is bits bag here you've already seen this one this is the same one as I have with me in the car when I'm bank fishing um, but this time I actually put it in the bag and I take it out with me on the boat okay so you've got uh, sanitizer sun lotion um, there's more braided loops in there a couple of um, uh, spool winders bit of super glue uh, pen knife uh, clicker for a counter the counter in your fish um, yeah that comes out with me anything I'm gonna need uh, you're not gonna need you, you don't need to take everything out with you for the day but there's bits and pieces of spares you can take and a little tip inside all your boxes and all your bags inside your bag and inside your box I always put a bit of old newspaper in the bottom of the bag and a bit of old newspaper in the bottom of this bag so if you do take on any water I mean even just opening it up and real heavy rainstorms if you're opening up and looking inside it's enough to get a bit of water in there instead of it sitting on the tackle the newspaper will absorb it and soak it up and then at the end of the day when you come to tidy everything up pull the newspaper out chuck it and then put a new one in there um, 
yeah, there's probably quite a lot to take in, but we rushed through it quite nice and quickly there. And yeah, that's basically my setup, and that is exactly this is exactly what you'll see me more than any competition. This is how, how I'm going to go out, okay? And it will all be nice and prepared like this. It will look like this. I do take the time every the end of every trip that evening or the trip the, the time before I go out the next day. I will get everything back to ship shape and exactly where it is. So it's all about speed with competitions and if you're muddling around looking for certain flies looking for lines or your lines are tangled up on the spools they're not ready to come out you're costing yourself time so everything's there it's two hand it's ready to go no mistakes so there we go folks thanks for watching um hope you enjoyed that i hope that uh, answers a few questions you have about what we take out with us and um, yeah, this is a fairly standard selection um, uh, of what you'll see in most boat anglers, most competition boat anglers, uh, bags or boxes, um, less than some, more than others, uh, but uh, yeah, but thanks very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it, please click like, click subscribe, thanks for supporting the channel, um, and uh, we'll see you uh, pretty soon somewhere down the line, thanks very much, bye bye.